welcome back to Husky Squad. Today I'm gonna be doing a very special video. I figured we'll get a little bit more personal with you guys, more than our hiking trails and, and camping and all the stuff we've been doing. You guys have been asking a lot more questions, so we'll open up with you and we'll share a little bit more. Anyways, before I even start anything, it's it's so difficult for us to be able to update you guys here on our YouTube channel because it's not like Instagram where we can just post a story or say something really quick. For us to produce video content, it takes us a really long time. So, you know, it's hard for us just to come out with a video, especially I'm about to share with you what we've been um, what we've been doing for the last, I don't know, since January it all started. And it's difficult for us to come out with a video when all of that is going on because our videos do take a really long time. So, for those of you who are new, I'm Victoria, JC's behind the camera, he's filming, and Kimari's here, she's the one that's roaming everywhere, and Yuna is just relaxing, doing her thing, and Titus is behind me because he's mama's boy, and he's always attached to me somehow, or to dad actually, both of us, but he's definitely a mama's boy, and a good boy. So... We are in Montana of all places. Honestly, I didn't think we are going to end up here this year. JC and I have been together for quite a while and we love traveling. We love exploring, we love new places, but we always really liked nature too. And we used to do the national parks together before we had the Husky Squad. So we always had a great love for the outdoors. And for so many years since we've been together, we, we wanted to go travel the world. And what we really wanted to do, besides just traveling the world, we want to travel across the country and see all the national parks and all the great trails that there are in, in the US and Canada and beyond. That was one of our dreams. We've always wanted to do that. And, you know, I think that all of us get to a point sometime where we just have all this whole wish list of dreams that we want to do, and we don't do them. You know, we just, it just stacks up and time passes by and there's another New Year's and, you know, we make ourselves promises we're going to do that, but so many of us don't do it so it came to a point it was i think november december there were some personal things happening in our lives and we we're like you know what let's just let's take an opportunity and let's take a road trip let's let's travel let's take the squad you know we are mobile we're mobile entrepreneurs we can work from anywhere we live so it's not like we, we really we're fortunate we worked really hard that's a whole other story to get where we are to be able to to travel the world and be anywhere as long as we have good internet connection that's really important but you know we're in that place where we can do that so why are we waiting let's just travel you know we'll travel simple we have our, our jeep renegade and we'll just get a little rack on top and we'll travel we've done camping five nights in a row what's the big deal i mean we're very simple we live really simply so let's just do that that's what that's what we decided so we started looking at Airbnb different different ways. We knew that we can't camp across the country, not with three pups and not when the weather is not that great, but we were we were planning for around April time to start traveling and, and see where the road takes us and maybe, you know, take a trip for like four months total or three months total or something like that. Long story short, January comes around and all the pups, Titus, Yuna, and Kimari, it was literally January 3rd or 4th, all got sick. And we didn't really know what was really going, what was going on because they just had diarrhea. And you know, I've, I've healed that before with a little bit of chicken soup and, and white rice, you know, a bland diet and it goes away, but it wasn't going away. And we have to go to the vet, which uh, we don't go often because they're generally really, really healthy. And, you know, she thought she, they had something funny and gave them all antibiotics and it, it was not a fun time. But then, then it went a lot deeper. It went a lot deeper than that. I mean, Yuna, for, I would say, probably, Yuna about maybe seven years ago or so, she broke out with these rashes around her eyes and her muzzle. Um, she, she used to scratch herself bloody. So we learned about this thing that Huskies have a zinc deficiency, sometimes the way they process zinc. And we did that, we did a complete elimination diet, we, we switched everything to hypoallergenic in the house, um, no, no peanut butter for her. Hi, you want my coffee, honey? <laughs> um, and 
And slowly, after all these different things that we did, we don't really know exactly what resolved the, resolved the issue, but after all these things that we did, it went away. And in January, as you can tell, here's the aftermath on, on Yuna's eye. There's, her hair is growing back, but in January, when they got sick, right after they started getting antibi taking antibiotics, Yuna broke out again around her eye where you know the skin gets kind of crusty and all these things were going on with her eye and I was like oh my god it's coming back you know it's been gone for so long and we didn't change anything you know as far as how we're super clean at home I vacuum everything is like always but their bedding is washed and all of that on that aspect nothing has changed and she got that back and no, no, whatever we were doing nothing was going away it was just it got worse and Titus broke out with rashes on his belly everywhere and he was he was really suffering because no matter no matter what we did we had to keep him in an e-collar and that was that was not fun and it actually it finally is almost gone by now this whole this whole issue so I mean there's theories of why all of that happened and you know I, I'll go into it in another video that we'll do on, on specific on the subject but um, we did a lot of changes because of that now for their diet they're 100 percent raw now and they're they eat really healthy and we see incredible improvements happening to all of them now kimari while we were in in packwood we're on the trail and we see a bump on kimari's toe the size of a blueberry and it's bleeding that literally like destroyed our trip when we saw that, we couldn't figure out what that was. We thought maybe it's a rash, maybe, you know, because it all happened at the same time. All of that happened at the same time. Yuna's eye, Titus's belly rash, and, and Kimari's ginormous, you know, the size of a big blueberry thing on her toe. And I'll include a picture here so you guys can see it. But it was all bleeding on the trail while she was out, and she didn't. it didn't seem to hurt her, so we're like, okay you know we'll just go home everything is fine then we call the vet and you know everything was panic and then um at that point we go to the vet and we hear the words that no dog parent ever wants to hear no parent a human parent ever wants to hear i'm gonna leave this for the next video we're gonna upload um, about this subject specifically what happened with kimari but all of that turned into the situation that we had to really go internally as a family and really focus on healing the entire Husky squad, change their diet to raw. We found an amazing, incredible hol holistic vet in where we live in Oregon who has been our ally and literally our superhero with this whole process and really changed our life. And then we'll go into more detail with that, but in our next video that I'll upload specifically about Himari, but, you know, we, we really had to go inwards as a family and focus on healing and focus on really rethinking everything that we're doing from a nutrition standpoint, from feeding them kibble. And even JC and I took a really good look at our own life from a health perspective. And, you know, we, we applied some of our own changes with our health. But it was, it was a big wake-up call because we're already really generally healthy and we've, we, we've always been, JC and I have been really um, health-focused. We... We were always outdoors with the squad doing crazy miles. You know, we've we've had the squad slowly transition to toppings on their food. You guys have grown to some of that with our channel, but it's not enough. It really isn't enough. Um, it, it, it's like that. Either you pay, either you pay the vet or the doctor with you know surgeries and all kinds of issues, or you pay it with food. It's 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 one of the two choices, and we learned that unfortunately the hard way but it was it was still a great wake-up call i mean the squad they're not little kids anymore they're you know we don't know all of them the exact ages but they, they range between seven and nine years old so you know it's definitely time to really look at that if we want them to have a long um, healthy and happy life but yeah now fast forward uh, you know we we talked to our, our vet to our holistic vet and we told them hey we have this trip planned you know maybe maybe we should cancel it so we can deal with Kimari, we can deal with healing the squad. And you know what he said? He's like, no, now you guys actually have to go. You gotta go, just get out. We'll do everything, you know, while you guys are on the road. And we did, and it's amazing. And we left Oregon mid-March. We traveled through Idaho first. We stayed a night, so we started there. And then we traveled down to Utah, and we've 
always wanted to see Utah, you know, the red rocks, the hoodoos, and all the, what do they call those slot canyons, right? All these different places with, with in Utah, and that's been an amazing trip there. Utah has been incredible. And we'll do, we'll have separate videos on that experience on, on Utah, so we can bring you guys in on the miles of trails that we did there with the squad, and it was absolutely amazing. That was beautiful. From Utah, I'm trying to think, then we ended up in Colorado for three nights. Yeah, we ended up in Colorado for three nights and we stayed in a tiny house. And you guys, we have a great video coming for that too, with the Husky Squad in a tiny house and that was amazing. I'm trying to, it's so crazy to recall everything. But in the meantime, let's go inside. I wanna make the, the squad some snacks. This is gonna be a long video, so. This is a trick for you guys. We've been doing this for years. We used to do this with peanut butter, but because of Yuna's whole eye breakout thing, we stopped peanut butter, and instead we do now sunflower seed butter. We always get organic, now GMO, and yeah, and it's unsweet unsweetened and salt-free, so it's pretty much, if you look at the ingredients, it's 100% seed butter, so that's what we do. But yeah, I'll show you guys what we do. This is really cool, if I can open this jar, <laughs> okay, here it is. I could open it and I actually just got brand new, brand new toys for it and this keeps them really happy and entertained even though we already had our hike today. See, it's still a bit more liquidy than peanut butter, but this is great. So, you guys all know you're getting something, huh? We've been doing this thing for years. Let me rinse it really quick. So many dogs have allergies to peanuts. I'm actually so surprised that people, I mean, not that people, that companies have so much peanut flavored and peanut things for dogs when there's actually a lot of dogs that are allergic. Some people don't know that their dog is allergic to peanut butter, but they have rashes and different things. And one way to know for sure is just to eliminate it for at least a good 30 days or more. But anyways, let me fill those in. I'm just gonna, kind of drop them in there and then I'll massage it with my fingers. So yeah, back to our Colorado experience in the tiny house. That was amazing. We're gonna have a whole video for that for you guys. And then after that, we stayed in the only Motel 6 that I've actually enjoyed in my life because they're rough. <laughs> Motel 6 is uh, pretty rough. I don't know. I, I thought that that was the only place we could stay with our pups during travel. So. That's where we stayed, but in the meantime, we've learned over the last couple of weeks that La Quinta is actually dog friendly, which is awesome. And they have a limit with dogs, with two dogs maximum, but because of our Airbnb reputation that I share with the manager and I promised that we're gonna be great guests and all that good stuff, they allowed us with our three pups. So now it's, we have a membership with them and now they know that we're okay. After that, we stayed at a stopover in Wisconsin for three days, which I'm so mad that we only had three days there. So long story about that. And then we arrived to Maine April 1st. So that was like two weeks into our trip. The cabin was like so cutesy. It was like a little cute cabin. And the first night we arrived there, we arrived there at night. I was like, oh my God, JC, look outside the window of the car. The moon is huge and it's, you know, you can see it on the lake there. It's a really beautiful lake. But then as we get closer, I realized that the entire ginormous lake, Cold Stream Pond, was still completely frozen over and it was May, it was April 1st. I was like, wow, this is gonna be interesting. You know, what are we gonna do about that? Anyways, come here kids, let me give you guys your treats before you just can't handle it anymore. You ready? Nice, Mari. Figure that out, that's your new toy. So yeah, we waited forever for that ice to go out on the lake, but every single trail, everything we looked at, we went, we drove for miles trying different trails. Everything was full of this deep slush. And with the Husky Squad, as you guys know, that is just, that's not happening. They were impatient. We couldn't give them their exercise. And it was really difficult for us too, because that's our exercise too. But for them, I felt like it was, it was not fair, right? It was not fair. So what we did, after three weeks of waiting, we packed up our bags and we went to upstate New York. I booked another Airbnb 
and you know all the Airbnb hosts were amazing. The Airbnb host in, in Maine was so sweet to us. She was so kind. Andrea from that cabin up in Maine was amazing, and so was Sarah at the buyer. Oh my God, that place! The buyer in in New York, in upstate New York, by the Catskills is just oh so beautiful. Kingston, that little town in upstate New York, is gorgeous. Everything about that whole area just blew our mind and it wasn't even planned on our trip, right? So it was an incredible experience, incredible, incredible experience. I mean, there were deer in the morning, herds of deer in the morning and the evening and the, babe, the miniature horses were there. Sarah's place was just so peaceful. I would live there. It's that beautiful. It was such a gorgeous place. Now we're able to go on like a 14 mile hike. You know, that's the first thing we did when we got there. We were constantly out and active with the squad and they were super happy but we learned something about the east coast when we were there i was actually okay you guys are gonna laugh at me but what i do and i want to find out how the weather is and how you know the, the season is going if spring has come to different places now i learned that i could go to instagram and type in the location go to places and usually you have like an instagram story pop up or you'll have you know more recent pictures of the area so while we were in the East Coast, I checked on Acadia National Park because Acadia National Park was on our bucket list. We wanted to do it. It's one of the only parks in the country that allows dogs. So it's like, it's a dream for us, right? So I check out that location and I see this girl wrote this story about Acadia National Park that's really recent, that that's the only place where she finds peace dealing with Lyme disease. And I was like, Lyme disease? Uh, wow, okay, Lyme disease I know comes from ticks because we used to live in Wisconsin. And then I find out from the place we went to get raw food for the squad that he had Lyme disease. And then we went for a hike and then suddenly there's ticks on our pups, you know, and there's ticks and ticks and the Catskills in New York just full of ticks. JC had a tick on him that I pulled out. I mean, I know that a lot of people found ways to deal with it and there's, you know, you can do chemicals for dogs and we, we're, we're not going to do any chemicals. I mean, one of the last things we want to do right now, especially with Kimari's situation, is we, we don't want to add any chemicals, you know, to, to her to her life. So after that time was over, we, we had booked a cabin in Vermont. And actually that cabin was the pinnacle cabin that we booked an Airbnb because, you know, we want to take great pictures of the Husky Squad and we're right in the Green Mountains of Vermont and everyone says all these great things are about Vermont. We wanted to go check out the nature. So we were super, super excited about that cabin. We, I think that was the first cabin we actually booked and then booked the, the months around it. So after all this planning to, to go to Vermont and that was supposed to be our most amazing experience, arriving to that disaster of a place, it, it, it looked like, I don't know who stayed there for the time before we came, but there was trash everywhere outside. The host didn't provide us a key. <clears throat> Even though I asked him before we got there, I thought the door would just be open. So we arrived there, there's no service. A long story, the place was an absolute disaster and that was supposed to be a place for us for a month. And we have over $200 worth of groceries in the car. That's all gonna get spoiled if it doesn't have a fridge or a freezer. Raw food for the squad. I mean, it, could, it really couldn't get any more of a tough situation in the strip. They were impatient, they all wanted to go inside the place. And now we have to go drive down the mountain to contact the host. But I was like, you know what? I don't even want to talk to the host because I'm scared that the outside looks like this. Then how is the inside going to look? So anyways, at that point, I, I worked with Airbnb to get the issue resolved. We got back up the mountain and we finally got in the house and it was an absolute disaster. I, I can't even tell you guys how that place was. And we paid a lot of money to stay there for a month. That was supposed to be like our pin. I think they want more seed butter. Oh, good girl, Kimari. Kimari, you're a good girl. Kimari's our cat. Kimari's our cat. Titus is our bear. Titus is such a good boy. You always want to kiss me. Okay. Okay. You good boy. You good boy. So, anyways, I actually filmed a video while we were there for the couple of hours we were there. And I was really upset. I was pissed off. So I don't know if you guys, what do you guys think? Let, let us know in the comments if you guys want to see that video because, you know, I'm usually a super relaxed, chilled person and that day I was not in a good place. I was borderline angry actually that night. And I don't know if you guys want to see this type of videos from us, but 
And I don't even know if I feel super comfortable to put out that video, but you know, it, it was a really rough time. I mean, there's way worse things that happen in this world and it's obviously not like a disaster, but for this planned trip that we've been planning for many, many years since Jason and I have been together, we wanted to do something like this and to travel with three dogs and for us, for that place to be so amazing and spending all that money to, to go experience the Green Mountains in a beautiful cabin, it was a huge disappointment, you know? It was literally your Airbnb worst nightmare. It was horrible. It was a horrible, horrible place, um, the inside. Anyways, so at that point, it's midnight, past midnight, and we can't, I'm not sleeping there. I don't feel comfortable to sleep in a room with dead flies and all these kind of things going on. And it was not sanitary. It was not safe. It was all these different issues. So we pack all our stuff, including all the food, and we, um, <clears throat> we head back to Albany to stay in the Motel 6, which we arrived after repacking all of our stuff. We arrived there at around 3, 4 in the morning and obviously I didn't have anywhere where to put the food except the tiny little fridge. That didn't help a whole lot. So the next day or a couple of days after, I ended up donating everything, all the food locally, which is great. At least it didn't go to waste and, and other people that could really use it got the food, which we're really happy about. But we didn't know what to do at that point because there's no way you can find anything on Airbnb with dogs. So we're like, you know what, let's just, let's just start heading west. We have no idea where we're gonna go, let's head west. And west is where home is, but let's see what we can do along the way. And we did La Quinta for, that was our first time we did La Quinta and that was a great experience. So from now on, Husky Squad is all about La Quinta. That's where we're gonna stay pretty much when we have to go from point to point. And then we stayed in Wisconsin from a very generous hotel. And the manager was really kind and allowed us to stay with our three dogs, which is not a usual thing for them. But they, again, read our Airbnb reviews and it makes a huge difference when you have stellar reviews from hosts. So that really helped and it was a great experience there for a couple of days to kind of recover, recuperate and plan our trip. So this is how we ended up here in Montana, in Bozeman, in this amazing cabin. For We, all, we were only able to get it for five nights, but when we got here, I, I, I was so, we were so shocked and mind blown about the beauty of this place. The host here usually doesn't allow dogs and I, I completely understand why. I mean, the couch is like, everything is, is quite high end in here and nothing is scratched, you know, dogs with their nails and everything is in perfect condition. It's absolutely stunning and you know, there's, there's no way that this place should get ruined. But she, uh, the host here, Molly, mm -hmm. saw our reviews and I practically begged her, hey, can, you, can we stay here? We want to explore Montana. Um, I promise you, we'll leave, it, we'll, leave it, we'll leave your cabin beautiful. If you have a vacuum, that would be amazing. And, you know, she agreed. So we were so, so grateful, Molly, for, for um, allowing us to stay in your place with our dogs. And you know, I, I really urge you guys, if, you, if you're a responsible dog parent like we are, and I'm sure there's so many of you in our audience that are, you know, build that reputation. Build that reputation up. Go wherever you are in the world to Airbnbs and go enjoy the outdoors and explore trails and do all these amazing things. You only live life once, right? So, you know, instead of going to a restaurant every other week, every weekend or eating out, all these things, this is, this is the things that we value the most, these life experiences. And Airbnb is a great place to do that because you get to enjoy gorgeous places and build that reputation with hosts that us dog parents are great. We know how to clean up after ourselves. We know how to take care of furniture. We know how to keep, keep my falling asleep. We know how to keep our dogs, you know, calm because they have their needs met on the trails and doing miles and miles like we did today. So, you know, they don't bark and it, Build that reputation, we need it. Us dog parents need it. And build that reputation on the trail. We always pick up our poop, right? If we have to keep building that reputation so we can start opening up the doors for, for dogs to be able to go anywhere. You know, the pack is, this is our family. We don't have kids and the three pups are our family. So we wanna be able to have all these amazing life experiences. Heck, honestly, I would have them on the plane with us to go to Europe. I would take them in the movie theater with, theater with us because they're so well behaved. They don't. I mean, our neighbors don't even know that we have dogs. That's how well behaved they are. So let's build that reputation that we are responsible um, dog parents. So yeah, we are in this beautiful place here in Montana for five for five nights. 
Uh, we'll do, we'll have separate videos on all these locations wherever we spend more time. So that's all coming. But Montana, we're so happy to be here. This place is wild. It's it's very, it's very untouched. It's, it's just how, how we like it. We're so pleasantly surprised how beautiful this place is. So tomorrow actually is not gonna rain. Not tomorrow, Monday is not gonna rain. So we're planning to do something epic with a squad and film it for you guys, just like our, our other hiking videos that we have. So that's coming too. And we're super excited because, you know, our road is open. We don't have a return date. We, we're gonna roll with the punches, whatever happens. We know how to curve around it right now. We've developed an amazing way to travel where we have all our belongings and all our business needs with us on the road, which we're super happy about. And at, at this point right now, we have no reason to go home, not yet anyways. So we have a lot of exciting projects coming, a lot of really cool collabs coming and just you know keeping the keeping the door open so with that being said guys live this life outdoors explore nature explore this beautiful earth that we have and and preserve preserve this place you know invite more people to come see our videos share with everyone because we are so passionate about this we're so passionate about living a simpler life but but really enjoying nature and keeping healthy, keeping active. There's something that nature does to the mind for you and for your dog, for your family, more than anything else. There's, to me anyways, and to JC too, there's nothing like nature in this world. Whenever we go out to nature, we just, we feel at peace, we feel at home. I see trees and I feel like it's home. You know, call me a tree hugger or whatever, but this is really how it is, it feels like home. So spread our message, spread our channel. We want to reach so many more people because we really, really believe in this lifestyle and we really believe in the power of the outdoors. Let's keep nature clean. Let's preserve it. Let's get involved in our local communities to keep this beautiful place natural and wild wherever it is that you are in the world. It doesn't matter. We have to protect our wild places. With that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already, and we'll see you next time on Husky Squad. Bye.